Hi, my name is Christy Blatchford. I'm the Courts columnist uh, for Post Media and the National Post. And I want to talk today about Elizabeth Wetlofer, the charming healthcare serial killer who murdered eight frail, vulnerable, elderly residents of uh, nursing homes and also tried to kill four others, also in nursing homes, and one in home care. She was living in her own home. I've been off and on covering the Wetlofer inquiry and it, it's done some really great work in terms of finding out the sort of constellation of circumstances that led to Wetlawfer being able to carry out her murders over the course of a decade. This is the police, the OPP interview with Wetlawfer, who it should be pointed out would still be working in care homes in Ontario and presumably killing people, except that she went into the Queen Street Mental Health Centre one day and confessed and they called the police and she then confessed to the police and in this confession she talks about how Mr. Horvath had tried to to fight her off as she gave him two lethal injections of insulin she had learned by then she'd refined her technique and she knew that the fast acting insulin would quickly remove any resistance and the long acting insulin would do its deadly work Anyway, at the inquiry, uh, I haven't been there every day. I don't pretend to. I'm not an expert. But some of the victims' relatives had an opportunity recently to speak to the commissioner and to the inquiry and just talk about the, the loss they've had. And one of them was Mr. Horovath's son, who has the very same name. He's Arpad Jr. And uh, he was incandescent with rage when he addressed the commissioner. And I don't blame him. The son said, you know, that he expected that at the inquiry, which has found out the facts, and that's the best thing it could have done. But he expected to have heard from the union, from the administrators of the homes, the for-profit homes, from the nurses, uh, College of Nurses, which, you know, acted, shall we say, with the speed of molasses. I think it's a fair comment. From government, the government has inspectors who are supposed to go out and inspect long-term care homes. But, of course, there aren't enough inspectors. There aren't enough anybody working in the system. It is chronically, perpetually, always understaffed, badly understaffed. When Elizabeth Wetlofer was prowling the halls of Crescent Care on the overnight shift, the only registered nurse on duty was her. It's astonishing she killed only eight people. Arpad Horvath Jr. was as outraged as I am and I, as I think all Ontarians and Canadians should be. We all have had or have elderly relatives in care homes. We all know how understaffed they are. We all know that what they provide, even the really, really good ones, the expensive ones, they provide the bare minimum. That's what they provide. And yet we, are all, we all make this deal with the devil where we will not say how bad it is. I remember when I was looking for a place for my mother and she, she didn't stay in a fancy one. She stayed in a sort of good average one, I'd say. And the first thing you look for is that it doesn't stink of urine, because that tells you maybe it's okay. One of the lawyers who represents the families of the murder victims described yesterday, because we know that Mr. Horvath fought this big chunk of change killer nurse off as she administered the last two injections. And the lawyer was saying that this image of this frail old man warding off a nurse who was giving him a lethal injection is an obscene image and it is an obscene image but i'm telling you the fundamental underlying obscenity is far more grave that we accept that this is the best not that we can do but that we will do it is a great disgrace